Have you ever felt like your clients or your leads were just slipping through the cracks in your real estate business? Well, in this video, I'm going to actually take you behind the scenes in a coaching call in the Market Authority Academy on how we were able to help troubleshoot this exact challenge with three different agents who I'm coaching. So I'm going to actually play the footage and so that you can kind of see what was going on with these agents and what I coached them through. And then I'm going to do something kind of fun where I give you the play by play and pull out specifically the tips and actions that you can start taking action on right now from that advice. Kind of cool, right? If you like this idea, definitely make sure that you are liking this video, subscribe to this channel. That is going to tell me that this definitely landed for you and I should do this again in the future. But ultimately, by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what to do to close the gap between any clients who are falling through the cracks in your real estate business. Let's just fix that right now going into 2025. And hey, if you're new here, I'm Stephanie and I help real estate agents build businesses that thrive without burning out. If you're ready to stop losing leads and set your business up for success in 2025, join me on my live class coming up where I'm going to walk you through a blueprint for your real estate business that covers lead generation, the client journey, and time management. The link is in the description below. Do not miss this class. Okay, so clip yes. number one. Um, so I have three questions related to the lead tracker. My first one is, which one do you think we should use? Because I know it's two. And I asked this question a couple of weeks ago and I need to do it. Um, but which one do you think? I know that there is one that's like at the beginning when you're starting out. Um, but because I've been in the business for some time and I kind of have a little bit of idea, do you think I should just use the more advanced one? Yeah. And I think that until you have this down as second nature, stick with the lead tracker. Okay, because the other one is not a lead tracker. It's more of a... Yeah, so so let's just look at this again really quickly. So in this clip, my my agent came to me and said, you know, I'm having trouble staying consistent with tracking my leads and knowing the best way to go about it. So watch me as I kind of walk through a really solid lead tracking routine that any agent can do right away. Phase one is the lead tracker from module one. Every week, and I'll talk about the routine in a minute, but every Friday you're going in and you're updating this with how many leads you have coming in. You're updating any notes, you're updating any new leads, you're updating um, any changes. Like let's say you made an appointment uh, with Jenna and Steve, and then you go back and you're like, okay, cool. There's only two, two outreaches until they ended up coming back. Awesome. Um, so you're doing this on Fridays. The last Friday of the month, you're going into the deal tab and just moving anything over that closed. So you're copying and pasting anything that closed. Now Meg said, just, just as an aside, Meg said, how many, how many times are you following up before you remove them? You never remove them from this. So metrics tracking is really important and it's something that most real estate agents don't really get into until they realize it's what's wrecking their business, like not having it. And so in this instance, um, this agent is a really successful agent, uh, mostly referral uh, business coming her way. She closes a lot of deals. And she's trying to um, really fill in the margin to make sure she is making the most of every opportunity that comes her way. And so what we want to be doing is tracking our leads every week. And the reason why this is so important is it's going to show you where your clients are coming from. So you know what you can eliminate or what you can double down on in terms of what you're working on each week. I've got leads on my lead tracker from 2017. Like you do not remove them from this because you're tracking the leads that you're getting in. Number one, you want to have a record of where those leads are coming in. And number two, you want to have a record of who you need to go back to if they slip through the cracks. Okay. So at the end of every year, we go, Bryce and I go through our lead and deal tracker. And even 10 years into it, we'll go through our lead tracker and see that name of someone that we totally forgot about. You know, maybe they had put their plans on hold or like we missed a follow up, whatever happens. And we'll go back and almost always get some like last minute deals in the year or like revive clients who had paused their search and we forgot about them just by going back and through a lead tracker. It's a lot harder to do that with a CRM. Trust me. So until this is like absolutely um, second nature, you're going to stick with this. So the follow up question to this was, do I need to really track my leads on the spreadsheet and follow a boss? My answer, well, her CRM is follow boss. My answer is yes. And then what about the deals? Are you tracking them on the spreadsheet and in follow boss? 
I don't, I don't use any of the reporting in follow up boss. I hate it. I hate all the reporting. I think it's trash. Okay. I actually <laughs> don't mind it, but I, I can see, I don't mind it um, because I can go pull a report because I, I created custom fields. So yeah. I can go pull a report and I can see exactly where my business comes from. So that's what I use it for. Mm -hmm. um, as far as closed, deal, <laughs> closed deals, but, but I can't see where I'm, you know, my conversion. And I guess I should say. It doesn't really track that very well. Okay, so we're wrapping up this convo with Dee. Let's see what else she's got. My last question is, I know that we should track people. Like yesterday, I got several potential leads, but I also get DMs on Instagram or even like people that come into my email system from my website. And these are people that I don't know. They're complete strangers and I haven't spoken to. Um, they clicked on a... Um, I have like a, you know, a lead magnet on my website and then they flow desk sends me an email saying you have a new subscriber. Love it. And then I send them an email to try to get them to book a call with me, but they're, you know, and I don't have a phone number, right? It's just an email. Anyway, is that a lead that you attract? I know the other ones are no brainers, <laughs> but those, those are ones that I'm curious about. Yeah. I'm, I'm inputting it as a lead. If they have a pulse, if they're expressing interest in buying or selling in the next 12 to 18 months. And if they're able to do that with me, usually I cannot determine that unless I have a phone call. Okay. That answers my question. A pre-qualification call should occur for it to be considered a lead. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're counting it a lead if they have a pulse, if they have the desire to buy or sell real estate in the next 12 to 18 months, that's right. We're not only counting people who want to go right now. Like I want to close deals a year from now too. Got to start filling up that pipeline. And if they're able to do that with me, if they have a, a buyer rep with another agent, they're not a lead. If they uh, just filed bankruptcy and like feasibly can't really buy, even though they would like to, they're not a lead. Right. And so we're always going to have an initial conversation or phone call. Even if you're at an open house and you're having a rapport building conversation with a new client who you're like, oh man, this could be really great. I would definitely count that as a lead as long as we can determine those three things. And if that is a lead, you need to be tracking them. There you go. Honestly, like the best advice from this, just as I'm like reviewing that conversation is overcomplicating any part of this is going to keep you from being successful. You're not going to do something consistently if it's too complicated. So keep it simple. Keep it simple. Every Friday, track how many leads came into your business. On the last Friday of the month, track how many of those closed. That's going to give you your conversion rates and tell you what's working in your business so that you know what to do more of. It's as simple as that. Okay, so let's see what questions came up after that first conversation. This line of questioning has actually been very helpful to me because every time we go through this section, I find myself a little confused about this. So now tell me if my understanding now is correct. So the, the lead tracker is used to analyze where the leads are coming from, how long it takes to convert them. That helps us decide where to improve or how to allocate our marketing resources right? Versus the CRM is what we use to contact those clients regularly and stay in, stay in contact with them. Is that an accurate description of both things? You nailed it. You could not, I could not have said it better myself. Yeah. Okay. So, um, do I include like, prof I'm trying to make professional contacts, vendor contacts. Those aren't necessarily, uh, leads, but they are because they're potential referral sources. So do I want to include them as well in, in the lead tracker? How many times I have to talk to them before I get a lead from them, so on and so forth? Not necessarily. Okay. However, if that was a goal of yours to um, grow your professional network yeah. by a certain number, you would be tracking that like in the, in the launch pad or in whatever business planning tool you're using to track your goals. Okay, so since the lead tracker is used to analyze metrics to refine our business, instead of doing it like yearly, should we analyze this like on a 90 day basis, do chunks on a 90 day basis? So that way, if we need to make adjustments, we can do that. Absolutely. So during the quarterly accelerator, a lot of times we will share um, this. Let me go ahead and find it. This spreadsheet. You guys are getting an inside peek to all my on my proprietary materials. 
And so, so what, what some people have done, as you can see below, they've just added the lead and deal report tabs to this as well. So ignore my, ignore my colors. I know that you guys have a little bit different, but what they would do is add the leads and their deals just all in the same tab. And then we can pull measurables quarterly. And so that's when we're using this metrics that matter spreadsheet also in, in module seven. And again, for, for example, anytime you are looking to do some business planning on a quarterly basis, or this is really important. Listen to this. Try to correct course. This is where we want to do that. So we would add in our lead sources here from the lead report, whatever we have on there. Maybe you have two, maybe you have five, whatever you're going to add it there. And then you're going to count the total number of leads received, appointments set, how many deals are in the pipeline, like how many you're looking to close, and then the number of closed deals. And that's what's going to automatically calculate your conversion. So you don't have to have like a really special spreadsheet with like formulas added in to determine this on your own. But every 90 days, look at your leads that you've tracked and ask yourself some questions. Which lead sources are converting the best for me? What do I want to continue spending money on? So if you, for example, hire a lead generating company, or if you're buying Zillow leads, for example, internet leads, you have to give it at least six months of time before you'll know whether or not it's working for you. And you're not going to know whether or not it's working for you if you're not tracking those metrics. And so every 90 days, because we're on a 90 day sales cycle with real estate, go in and check that quarterly to see what your numbers are looking like so that you can correct course. So for example, a lot of times real estate agents will come to me in the Market Authority Academy and they'll say, you know what, Steph, we're doing really great with referral. We're doing really great with repeat, but the agents on my team, like I'm talking to a team leader, for example, the agents on my team think that we should really be investing in some internet leads. And I'll say, well, we can totally think about doing that, but let's look at your existing lead sources and let's make sure that everybody is capping out conversion as high as it can be across all of your existing lead sources before we add something new. Why would we spend money on something if your existing business still has some like juice left in the tank, you know? Okay, so as this conversation progressed, we have a real estate agent, Wendrika, who's hopping on um, in this call to tell us how this impacted her real estate business in practicing tracking her metrics for um, since she's been with us? Uh, it at, the, at a very, very base level, it took me from being very clueless about where my deals were coming from. Do you ever feel clueless about where your deals are coming from or like where your next lead is? If so, then it's a metrics tracking problem. Or just trying to scatter the information together and collecting it into such an organized way that it became so clear. It's like, oh, actually the big aha was that it was all sphere. It was all like the database just opened up and then I stopped wasting energy, trying to put, put wasting energy into lead sources that were not really very effective for me. So it helped me to dial in my really everything. It helped me to dial in my daily practices because I could very clearly see where everybody was coming from. E even knowing that I really only need to talk to people, a lead that's a, a kind of a sphere lead a couple of times. I think that's such an important thing. So a lot of real estate agents, two things that are sticking out to me, a lot of real estate agents will come in and they'll say, how often do I need to be following up? What does my follow-up need to look like? And it's like, it depends on the lead source. It depends on the lead. Um, but you do have to know what that needs to look like. So for example, open house, if you're generating leads from an open house, we can track and prove that you will need to follow up with that person eight to 12 times before they respond back to you eight to 12 times. If you are, um, mostly a referral based real estate agent, then that number is going to be way lower. It's like two contacts before they get back to you because there's that warm, trusting relationship already in place. Likewise to time management, a lot of real estate agents come to me saying, Stephanie, I can't stick to your routine. I have a really poor schedule. I'm just really bad with time management. And it's like, you're, you're probably not. That's probably not your challenge. The challenge is probably that you don't know what activities you need to manage. You don't know what activities need to be created into routine so that then you can stay consistent. Because if I told you, do these three things every single day, and with absolute certainty, you will earn two closings a month. You would do them. It's different for every agent. So you need someone who understands the stuff to walk you through what that looks like for you. The 12 times you were, you were talking about earlier. 
I don't really want to deal with that stuff. I want to deal with the like two times people. So then I'm putting my energy there, I'm putting all my resources there. Um, that was, I mean, I think off the top of my head, if you can think of anything else, but that's kind of off the top of my head right now where the ahas were. Um, I was totally wrong about what, what I thought was working versus what was actually working. A lot of times we make assumptions on our real estate business based on how we feel and our feelings a lot of times come from things that we can't control, like what the market is doing or what cross agents are speaking to us like, or, you know, whether or not that offer got accepted. You can't rely on how you feel to know what's happening in your business. You have to track the metrics. I've been in for 10 years now, and I guess this was like two years ago, maybe when this started for me about, yeah. um, and it has, it's changed everything. So like I'm feeling kind of wild all the time. I'm still kind of a wild headed person, but I just I feel so much more control now, like much more calm. That's amazing. Like, could you imagine feeling like you're in the driver's seat of your business and just having a clear understanding of what works and what doesn't so that you can cut out the busy work, cut out the noise and just focus on going all in on the stuff that's really going to drive your business forward. Like, that's amazing. The process of taking a moment to look at where the traffic is coming in so that you're not missing it, right? Like if you get really, really distracted by shiny objects, this is a great practice to ground, your, ground yourself and make sure that you are not looking for a dopamine hit somewhere else where it's really not gonna come back for you, right? Um, and, and I remember one, one big aha moment that you had, if I may, um, that, that you shared that I also would include in, in that for you is, uh, is the maturation rate and how you found that, oh, sometimes it's taking a lot longer for people to close than I realize. And maybe what I need to be doing is sharpening my, um, buyer onboarding experience. This is huge. Your lead sources will have a typical maturation rate is what we call it. Some other people call it gestation period, but that's gross to me. Um, but we talk about the maturation date, which is uh, rates, which is the number of days from when the lead is received to when they close. So if we're talking about an open house, it's anywhere from like three to six months, usually closer to six months. If we're, um, meaning if you hold an open house today, it probably won't close like whatever lead you got. If you got a really good lead, it's not going to close for six months. You need to be thinking about this. Um, if you have an Instagram client, sometimes it can take 12 months, depending on what you're saying to get the lead. If it's a referral, three months, like they're usually ready to go. Right. And so like, think about this a little bit and make sure that your systems are set up to support that. Meaning if you do have longer term follow-up, how long are you following up with them? How are you going to stay in touch with them? So like my Instagram leads who come in, if they are 12 months out, like I have to do something with them for 12 months before they convert. So my plan is set up for that. Just as an example. And how you're walking people through the, pro through the process and being more direct in your guidance. And then what you found was there's just a little faster to close, if I remember right, which was something that's yes. always stuck with me because I went through the same process. Absolutely. It helped me to uh, have more confidence in my skills and to be more directive. Um, and like everything that we learn in this program gives me more confidence than to be able to do that and to say, oh, actually, no, like they're coming to me for this help. They want me to direct them. And it really did help to see that. And yeah, things things close much faster and then when things close faster, you can close more. It's funny how that works. So what Wentrica found was that most of her business was coming in from her sphere, but it was taking as she was tracking it. She was like, why are some of these clients coming in and telling me they're ready to go right now? But then it takes them four months, six months to do anything. And she found it was because she wasn't really providing very clear guidance in her onboarding. She was like being very casual, like, OK, guys, let's go. When you're ready, we'll go look at a house and. Um, just kind of leaving it up to their devices because she didn't want to pressure her friends and family and like referrals that were coming in. But instead, I gave her a little bit of a mindset shift and I said, let's get really clear on how we're onboarding them and setting the next steps so that we can empower your clients, not push them, but empower them to take action towards their goals. And that made all the difference in her real estate business. Interesting stuff, right? Okay, that approach was totally new for this channel. So if it landed with you, if you're like, oh, this is kind of cool, let me know. You can let me know by leaving a comment or by simply liking this video and hitting subscribe. That tells me you want more of this kind of content and I'm here for you. Spending my time right here, giving you my strategies, helping you out. Let me know how I can best do that.
So if you are ready to take control of your lead generation strategy and get back in the driver's seat of your real estate business, then book an action-oriented strategy session with me where I will dive deep into your business with you and I'm going to create a personalized plan that you can implement right away. You're going to walk away with a clear roadmap to finish 2024 strong and set yourself up for success in 2025. The link to schedule is below. Let's get started. Thank you so much as always for tuning in and until next time, my friend, keep on crushing it.